They're designed for a single purpose, to kill with maximum efficiency, from flying shrapnel to rapid fire bullets, from irradiation to incineration to a microscopic drop of a lethal chemical agent. These weapons have one thing in common. If you're in their crosshairs, there's nowhere to hide. Today, we explore the deadliest weapons on World History Channel. On a cloudy fall day, a Soviet Tu-95 bomber flies over Novaya Simla in the Arctic Sea. The pilot, at an altitude of 35,000 feet, releases the most formidable nuclear weapon ever, the Tsar Bomba. Its detonation, a 50 megaton nuclear bomb, illuminates the sky, visible from 600 miles away. The Tsar Bomba, originally intended to be 100 megatons, remains the epitome of total annihilation. It was originally designed to be 100 megatons. It very nearly killed the senior officer who was piloting the aircraft that dropped the test article. Capable of destroying a 15-mile radius and causing severe burns within 64 miles, the Tsar Bomba symbolizes the peak of the Cold War arms race, a stark reminder of the catastrophic potential of nuclear warfare. Today, the threat of nuclear warfare has evolved. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, their once formidable nuclear arsenal now poses a risk of accidental deployment. The deterioration of their warning systems raises alarming concerns. The risk of accidental attack is more serious, I think, than most people uh, realize. The Russians maintain a large nuclear arsenal. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, uh, they've had a huge economic setback. Their warning system has deteriorated terribly. There are gaps in their radars their satellites have broken down. The Russians, of course, reassure us that, no, we have nothing to worry about. But the consequences would be so grave that we should take it very, very seriously, even if it has a minuscule chance of happening at all. Furthermore, the potential for nuclear attacks from rogue states or terrorist groups adds to the global tension. The prospect of even a small-scale nuclear detonation by these actors presents a horrifying scenario. Understanding the sheer power of a thermonuclear explosion requires grasping the immense energy unleashed. The fusion of hydrogen isotopes releases energy magnitudes higher than the sun's core. This results in thermal radiation, X-rays, and gamma rays, causing widespread destruction and long-term environmental impact. And it occurs in a very small volume. Therefore, the total energy divided by the volume is very large. And that means the temperatures are stupendously high, temperatures that are higher than the center of the sun. And if it were a humid day, you would be able to see that shockwave running along the ground and through the air because it would cause instant condensation of moisture in the atmosphere and you'd see sort of a white ghost of a shockwave traveling through the air. The fallout from such explosions is catastrophic. Radiation sickness, environmental contamination, and the potential for millions of casualties make thermonuclear bombs the deadliest weapons ever created. It emits all of this X radiation that's absorbed by the air around it. The outside of the air is burning. It's forming basically small. The nitrogen and the oxygen are reacting, turns brown, and so the light coming out actually goes down until that burns off, and then it goes up again. The X-rays don't get very far. They're absorbed by the air. The air is then heated up by these X-rays to millions of degrees. As of 2004, seven countries have joined the nuclear club, with many others striving to develop their own nuclear capabilities. Despite disarmament efforts, the global stockpile of nuclear warheads 
primarily held by the United States and Russia, stands as a constant reminder of the ongoing threat of nuclear warfare. Moving to chemical warfare, VX stands as one of the deadliest nerve agents ever created. A mere 30 micrograms can be lethal. This organophosphate attacks the nervous system, causing immediate and severe physiological reactions. The organophosphate type of chemicals are considered nerve agents because they attack the nervous system. The nervous system controls all of the functions of the body, and so by interrupting or stimulating that, you get all these various effects. VX is a persistent agent, which means it's less volatile than the other nerve agents. This means that uh, when it's exposed to the air, uh, the material doesn't go up into the air, and it lasts much longer. To give you an idea of how toxic the chemical is, if you pulled a penny out of your pocket, and if you looked at the penny and you looked at Lincoln's eye, it only takes a drop size of Lincoln's eye to cause lethality. VX's persistence and potency were believed to be used in Saddam Hussein's attack against the Kurds, resulting in over 5,000 deaths. The path to VX's discovery dates back to World War I, with its development peaking during the Cold War as a deterrent. We felt that it was very likely that uh, our adversaries would use chemical weapons against us, and we felt that they had VX in their arsenal. VX is often used as a terrain denial weapon, kind of the way you would use landmines. And one of the things we're very concerned about is not having our forces stumble into land that's been contaminated with VX. Today, the United States and Russia openly acknowledge their VX stockpiles, while other nations' capabilities remain suspect. The U.S. military remains on high alert for VX threats, equipping soldiers with protective gear and antidotes. We have the best protected force in the world. And each warfighter has all the protective equipment that he or she needs, the protective clothing and, and the protective mask. The masks will totally protect you against uh, inhaling VX. And the chemical protective clothing is specially designed so that the VX can't penetrate it. Though no VX was found in Iraq during the 2005 weapons search, the possibility of its production and use by other nations or terrorist groups remains a grave concern. Shifting to conventional weaponry, the machine gun stands as a cultural icon and a lethal killing machine. Its evolution, particularly the Maxim machine gun during World War I, demonstrates its devastating battlefield impact. This is the Maxim machine gun. This is the German model 1908. And this was the standard machine gun of the German Army in World War I. And this large thing that people at first thought it was an actual barrel, but this is actually a water jacket that goes around the barrel. The barrel gets so hot during the firing, the water cools it and keeps it from warping. The ammunition uh, would come in belts of 250 cartridges. It would be steered into the feed here and then cock it like this. Pull the belt in another time, cock it again. Now you're ready to go. Just both thumbs on the trigger and you're firing. And if all the conditions are right, you can fire 500 rounds in a minute. The Maxim's ability to fire 500 rounds per minute revolutionized warfare, playing a pivotal role in battles like the Somme, where its indiscriminate firepower caused unprecedented casualties. In World War II, incendiary bombs transformed cities into infernos. These bombs, packed with fuels like thermite and napalm, were designed to ignite massive fires, often leading to firestorms. The Allied firebombing campaigns against Germany and Japan, notably Dresden and Tokyo, resulted in immense destruction and loss of life, marking the incendiary bomb as one of the deadliest weapons in warfare. In World War II, the U.S. Navy's secret weapon, 
the VT fuse dramatically increased the effectiveness of anti-aircraft fire. This proximity fuse, using radio frequencies to detonate near targets, was a game changer in battles like the Philippine Sea. To shoot down an airplane required an average of 2,400 rounds of ammunition early in the war. Hitting an aircraft moving at high speed in three dimensions with a gun on a ship is one of the most difficult feats in warfare. There's simply too many variables to be accurately predicted. The VT fuse's introduction to warfare reduced the ammunition needed to down an aircraft from thousands to hundreds, marking a significant advancement in military technology. If you were making a list of the most important technological breakthroughs that came out of World War II, just below the atomic bomb and radar in general, you would list the VT fuse, which absolutely transformed the effectiveness of anti-aircraft fire. From nuclear bombs to chemical agents, from rapid-fire machine guns to incendiary bombs and revolutionary fuses, these weapons have shaped the course of modern warfare. Their power, efficiency, and destructive capabilities remind us of the ongoing challenges in military strategy and the relentless pursuit of technological advancement in the art of war. This is World History Channel, exploring the deadliest weapons. Thank you for joining us on this journey through history on the World History Channel. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the fascinating stories and events that have shaped our world. If you found this video informative and entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and share it with your friends and family. By subscribing to our channel, you'll never miss out on any of our future content, covering everything from ancient civilizations to modern day events. We love hearing from our viewers, so please leave a comment below and let us know what topics you'd like us to cover next. Your support means the world to us, and it helps us continue to create engaging and educational content for you. So remember to like, share, subscribe, and comment, and together, let's keep exploring the captivating stories of our world. Thank you for watching the World History Channel.